Okay, I want to move on to Kepler's laws and tie our theory of gravity into our um, three laws of planetary motion. So as a reminder, Kepler found that planets orbit in ellipses and that the star is at one focus of the ellipse. Um, the second law told us that um, in equal amounts of time, uh, planets traverse equal areas. Why does this say that? That shouldn't say that. And the third law is mathematical. The third law says that the square of the period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. So um, this is a more complicated proportionality than the proportionality based on uh, you know, the direct proportionality of force to mass or the inverse square proportionality um, on radius. So let's say that we have Mars and Venus and Let's say that Mars is about twice the distance from the sun as Venus, right? Um, distance from the sun is gonna be this semi-major axis variable, just to remind you. So the distance from the sun is about that semi-major axis. Using what you now know about proportionality, how much longer is the Martian year than the Venusian year? So let me restart my poll. And now consider what has to happen to the variables in order to find the period by itself. Yep, that's exactly right. So if we had, if we wanted to re-express this proportionality by getting rid of this square, then we could just take the square root um, at the very beginning before moving on and find that the period is proportional to the semi-major axis to a power of three halves, which means you cube it and then you take a square root. So if you wanna put something in your calculator, that's what I would put in. Um, so if you take your factor of two and cube it, you get eight, and then take a square root, you get something less than three. So in that case, that would make our answer here choice number three, because it would be about three times as long of a period. So I want to um, tie this back to our discussion of gravity, because like we said last time, you know, what do we use Kepler's third law for? Well, it turns out that if you combine Kepler's third law with Newton's laws of motion, then you can actually use it to find the mass of a system. So I'm not gonna go through the derivation, uh, but if you're curious about it, I'm happy to show you in office hours. The setup is like this. If I have some mass, I'm gonna call it MC, the mass at the center of the orbit, and then MO, the mass of some orbiting object. Then if I put Newton's law and Kepler's laws together, then the combined mass of that whole system times the period of the orbiting body squared is equal to the semi-major axis of that orbiting body cubed. So now instead of having this proportional to symbol, I replaced it with an, a directly equal sign and it's directly equal because now we know the constant of proportionality. So we know the way to find the exact result instead of just finding the proportionality relationship. So this is pretty cool. And there's something else that's really um, clever that we can do here, which is that recognizing that most planets are a lot, lot, lot less massive than their stars, we can almost always ignore the mass of the orbiting object. So the mass of the sun is 99.99% the mass of the whole solar system. All of the planets have negligible masses compared to the sun. And so that makes our final equation even simpler and means that we can find the mass of an object at the center of an orbit just by knowing the semi-major axis and the orbital period of any one object orbiting around it. So we're going to use this today to calculate the mass of Saturn. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a lab where we're going to take the uh, moon Titan. This is Saturn's largest moon. And we're going to find out its orbital period and its semi-major axis using observational data from a telescope. And so we're going to use that data to find the mass of Saturn. Um, this is probably going to take us actually longer than today's class period. So hopefully all the same people will be here next time and we'll finish off this lab uh, at the beginning of Wednesday's class.